Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody out there. It is so great to have you this evening, or for some of you all, it's the morning or afternoon. Either way, we hope you're having a great day out there. My name is Ebony Bell. I am the managing editor, uh, as well as the owner of Tag Magazine. We also run the Tag Scholarship Fund as well, and both of those things are a big reason why we are here today. Um, obviously, we're going to do some wine tasting, thanks to our friends at Lion and Dove. Uh, and of course, you all know we have an amazing uh, special guest that's going to be doing some wine tasting with us. Um, so we're waiting on her to come in, but I just wanted to welcome you all and kind of let you know uh, why we're here. So uh, we actually did a virtual wine tasting just a couple months ago um, with an actress from uh, the L Word uh, Generation Q, which was absolutely amazing, Ari. And uh, we decided, hey, why don't we do this more uh, and get more people involved from the community? And so that's exactly what we did. Um, specifically, we did this because like a lot of businesses, uh, Tag um, you know, is a media company where we're losing uh, business because of COVID and things like that. Um, and it's really important that we continue to tell the stories of LGBTQ women. Uh, so we are here to help support queer women's media, uh, but we are also here to raise money for our Tag Scholarship Fund as well. I'm super excited. So before I bring on our special guest, I do have to say we have an amazing donor who has come in and they said, if we raise at least a thousand dollars tonight, they will match it and they will donate a thousand dollars to our tag scholarship fund. Our tag scholarship fund is specifically giving young queer women of color an opportunity to get the education that they deserve. We saw that, you know, uh, that the numbers were low with LGBTQ students uh, dropping out or, or not graduating or not being able to afford to graduate. Uh, so we wanted to be a part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And that's a big reason that we started the TAG Scholarship Fund. Um, also, as a, as a Black queer woman uh, running our own business, I, I know there's not a lot of opportunities for us sometimes out there. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're putting leaders out there, future leaders, because um, they deserve a chance just like anybody else does. So uh, that's a big reason why we're here. As you can see, if you go to uh, www.supporttagmagazine.com, we are going to get this started. We have a goal of $5,000 to reach, uh, and we're hoping you can help us with that tonight. You can go right on there, make a donation. We also have some really cool things in our tag shop that you can buy. You can buy a subscription to the magazine, you can buy a tag shirt. We even have some way hot shirts as well, thanks to our friends at Fangirl Shirts. Um, we have all kinds of things. So uh, we would love it if during this program you take some time or even after uh, to go ahead and go to supporttagmagazine.com uh, and make a donation. Uh, because what, from what I hear, the Erpers have no chill. And the, my favorite people are people with no chill. So somebody said, hey, if you have Erpers, they're going to support you. So I, I fully hope you guys show up and show out uh, for our LGBTQ youth as well as queer women's media. So without further ado, I know you all just didn't come for me. Uh, I'd like to in introduce an amazing individual who, uh, for the past couple months, has been helping us to raise money to support queer women's media. Uh, not once, but twice. Uh, we asked her to uh, donate some signed headshots. They were beautiful headshots, and they were gone like that uh, because you guys are so amazing. And so we went back to her and said, hey, can you help us you know, raise some more um, money and, and help us out? She said, not a problem. Um, so I think you guys might know who I'm talking about. Let's see, let's see if you recognize her. Hi! <laughs> hey, Kat, how's it going? Really great, how are you? Good, good, I'm you're outside. So I'm outside now, I've got my rainbow shirt on, <laughs> I'm excited, good. this is gonna be awesome. Good. It's gonna be great. I just wanna thank you so much for, for doing this um, and, and being a huge part of supporting uh, black queer owned businesses as well as our, our scholarship fund. It is 
like my absolute pleasure. I'm so glad we could do this. I love what you're doing, Ebony. I love that, you know, we're here with the Erpers who you, I just heard your opening remarks and you're right, they're amazing. They're always show up to support. And I think it's especially important. You know, one of the things that struck me when um, we first started talking, uh, I guess a month or, or two ago, um, was when you said you're one of only two publications in the United States for and created and run and for queer women. Is that, am I getting that? That, is, that is correct. We are only one yeah. of two left uh, across the country, which is like, we we want to make sure we can continue to, to have our voices heard because we've seen so many other media companies unfortunately have to close down and we don't want to be that. And not just because it's us, but because we really want to tell our stories uh, and, and keep our uh, stories alive out there. So yeah, we're in print and we're online. Uh, and we also have a couple podcast shows too. Amazing. Yeah, you guys, I don't know if you are familiar with TAG. If you're not, obviously you are now and you need to go check them out and support. I mean, especially like small businesses and it's it's all about the support of that community around them. It is so, I think, easy, especially in these times of these huge corporations for small businesses to just get like lost in the shuffle. And I, I'm, I just admire, Ebony, what you do so much being a small business owner. It's not an easy thing to yeah. keep these things afloat and to keep them thriving. And there's so much weight on your shoulders because as a small business owner, you're kind of juggling a million different things at the same time. And I just want to say like massive kudos to you. I admire you greatly for what you do, for the work that you do and the incredible organization that you've put together. So well done. And we're here with the Erpers. We're showing up to support and make sure that you guys keep going strong. Yes. And throughout, uh Throughout, um, I'm going to let you guys know how much we're raising. We're going to be having some great wine. I'm going to bring out our amazing wine rep in just a second. Uh, but also make sure you have some questions. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get to everybody, but we're going to try to answer as many questions as possible, or a cat will answer as many questions as possible throughout. So we really want to just have some fun, ask some questions. Maybe you've just been dying and burning to ask. Obviously, no spoilers, I'm sure. Um, but <laughs> We'll do the best that we that we can. So we're gonna get this wine uh, party started. You ready, Kat? Let's do it. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Awesome. All right. Well, without further ado, my favorite, our favorite wine rep, Devin. Woo! Hey, Devin. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I like that I went last because. As you know, the best people are the ones that show up with great drinks to the party. So, <laughs> <laughs> and thanks once again so much for having us. And you know, Ebony, from the bottom of our hearts here at Lion and Dove, we absolutely love to support Tag Magazine. Um, and Kat, we appreciate you helping Tag Magazine as well, of course. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for having us. Uh, my name's Devin. I'm a wine specialist for Line and Dove Wines, which we'll be tasting today. Um, we're just going to taste four really great wines that we have. And then Kat obviously is going to do um, a super fun Q&A for you all. Um, now, my job, honestly, here today is to get Kat tipsy enough so then she does give you some support. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to be in big trouble. I think that's what they told me in our pre-show meeting um, was exactly that. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'll do my best, Kat. <laughs> but anyway, um, just a little bit about Line and Dove before we get started. Um, obviously, this is our second live virtual uh, wine event with uh, Ebony and Tag Magazine. So we're thrilled to help out. Um, we are a locally owned wine brand based out of Frederick, Maryland, um, owned by DMV Distributing. All the wines that we're going to taste today, and hopefully some of you got a chance to pick up the Line and Dove wines, are from Chile, for the exception of the, the Moscato we're gonna be tasting last, is from Italy. Um, but super small, great farm. So you're supporting a local business here in the States, as well as local farms that are growing these amazing grapes uh, worldwide. Um, we are, all the wines um, from Line and Dove are vegan friendly, they're gluten free, and they're kosher for Passover. So no matter who you're sharing this wine with, it's a wine for everyone. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you guys do have questions, I know people are always confused when I say vegan wines and um, we're, <laughs> vegan, we're vegan right down to the adhesive. The have this on the <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so once again, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I know we're gonna get started with our line and dove Sauvignon Blanc so we can start drinking that. Um, 
You guys have your time. Ebony's like, I've been ready all day. I've been <laughs> ready all day. Yeah. I'm on my patio, so I have this like, makeshift cooler that I fill with ice. <laughs> no, no, I've seen it all at this point, Kat, so <laughs> I'm not judging at all. Um, now, real quick, before we get started um, drinking the wine, I want to mention uh, Lining Dove has been supporting magazine for quite some time now, um, especially once uh, all the COVID and quarantine started. We absolutely love to support them. Actually, we're supporting you guys before even all this. Oof. Um, yeah, y'all, y'all with it. <laughs> yeah, you know how we roll. Um, but we are donating until midnight tonight. We're continuing um, one dollar per like on our Line and Dove Facebook page or Instagram. Even if you like us on both, that equals two dollars. Um, the link's right here at the bottom, and we're donating that towards Tag's uh, scholarship fund as well. So make sure you go over, just hit that like button. It's not coming out of your pocket; it's coming out of ours. Um, so we want to support their scholarship fund um, as much as we can. Um, so without further ado, if you guys want to pour your Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, so we're doing this guy. Oh, I'm so happy I opened it without too much fuss because sometimes I'm, I'm not the best at opening. Yeah, wine. and it's always fun to watch people open wine as well. Struggle, right? People haven't opened, you know, 5,000 <laughs> bottles like me in their lifetime. Don't, Don't worry, I still struggle as well. So we are kicking it off with the Line and Dove Sauvignon Blanc, everyone. Um, this is 100% Sauvignon Blanc grapes grown and produced in Chile. Um, actually, the Curaco Valley in Chile. It's a really great humidity and climate to grow these fantastic grapes. Um, this has been rated in the Washington Post. I doubt that you get the Washington Post up there in Canada, Kat, but uh, super great, uh, fantastic Um publication down here, especially in the tri-state area. Um, and David McIntyre rated this is excellent. This is a really fantastic Sauvignon Blanc. It's really well balanced. And one thing I have to say about Lion and Dove wines is that whether you pair them with food or not, you don't necessarily have to. They're completely well balanced. And these are great wines for all occasions, including Q and A's with Kat Burrell. <laughs> yeah, and apparently uh, Jessica also thinks so. She said she recently right. brought two of your wines from Lion and Dove last month and they tasted so good. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is lovely yeah, and very Jessica. drinkable. I agree. Like, I think the thing I struggle with, with I'm more of a red drinker with white mm -hmm. they find them. And I don't know what the right term is to describe, like too snappy, too acidic almost like, mm -hmm. and this is really nice. It's like, it feels softer. Yes. Is, is that what you would call more balanced? I'm really yeah. tired. Um, so there's a thing called tannins that automatically appear when you're making wine. Usually they're heavier in your dry reds, but even in your white wines, you can have kind of, it's like that pucker power of mm. the grapes. So they're, it's related to what we call tannins, but this has very low tannins. So it is an easier to drink wine. Easier to drink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you'll notice this has just a little bit of grapefruit taste, um, but it's also got some pear you can taste even aroma wise you know everyone tastes are a little bit different but this is a very really nice fruity but light sauvignon blanc Devin, while we're doing this um would you be able to give me mostly an education on when you go to what like i've been to wine tastings uh -huh. i always feel like they're like now you can taste this and if you like what is the what is your recommendation or to the best way, like people do this swirling thing. And you know, I just do it because I'm seeing other people do it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we looking for when we do this? Or, or you've ever need to, well, if you're ever doing a wine tasting in Winona Earp or, you know, working moms or whichever, um, you can swirl it usually with your whites. It doesn't help as much when you swirl, but that just um, brings more oxygen into your glass and it brings out the taste and the aroma. Um, so it's also a good idea to drink out of stemmed glasses instead of stemless. And you have a great wine glass, so. I just bought the perfect. biggest ones. That's good to know. <laughs> That's, did you actually have to go out and like buy a nice No, one? no, I had them, but um, okay. you know, because they have all the different, you can, I know that there's a white wine glass and yeah, a red wine yeah. glass, but we're not too fancy here. So we just. <laughs> I used to work at a winery. You would be imagined, like amazed at what I've drank mm -hmm. wine out of. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, right out of the barrel half the time, but exactly. Oh. 
Nice. So you do want to swirl it. And then everyone always notices the color of it. And you don't necessarily do that by lifting it up. Um, you actually want to kind of look straight down into it to notice the color. Um, another great thing about gluten or uh, sorry, vegan wines is because of the filtration process, um, they tend to take a little bit longer um, and they use they don't use animal protein and stuff like that. So the wines themselves have more of a clarity to them. So, so you can see you can't Wine is very exciting. Wine mm -hmm. is very exciting. Go so ahead. Really the vegan, the vegan wine. Ebony, did you know that there was such a thing as vegan wine? No, no. And it's gluten and it's gluten free. Is there gluten, gluten wine? wine? Um yeah, yeah, depending on the oak barrels and whatever else that they can mm -hmm. actually be housed in for um fermentation and everything. Yeah. It's uh yeah. they can have gluten. Mm -hmm. And what makes it like what makes a wine not vegan? Um so once you, <laughs> I know, right? Vegan wines. Um, so once you gather up all your grapes, say you hand harvest them or whichever, a lot of the line and dove wines are hand harvested. Um, obviously, you're going to put them in just like a huge vat or whatever. Different wineries have different kind of things in that uh, respect. But then you have all your grapes and you also have all the stems that they could be connected to, your skins, depending on what wine you're making. Um, honestly, there could even be bugs or whatever else. It's, you know, it, it's a it, it's a farm essentially, it's just growing grapes. Um, so the filtration process when, say if you make spaghetti and you're trying to, you know, rinse out your noodles and everything, um, really your strainer is what could have animal protein. And a lot of different things have been used in the past. A lot of wineries use different things. Um, animal byproducts like protein, um, stuff like that, really make the winemaking process faster. So a lot of companies use those methods. Um, but we, our farms don't, and our wineries don't that make line and dove. So they have different things. They even have um, concrete that they use, and it really just, it's kind of like a whole magnet system, but it, it's time oh, consuming. Interesting. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I had no idea that wine might not be, be, when I saw it on your website, I was like, that seems like a marketing <laughs> trick. But now I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, vegetarian friendly. But you know, I always make the mistake when people ask what to pair it with. And it, even it could be a vegetarian for all I know that's like, oh, this great vegan wine. I'm like, chicken? Yeah, goes well with chicken. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I always to come up with a vegetarian option as well. But obviously, once you taste these wines, you realize you can pair them with anything and mm -hmm. it's super great. Um, and so would this be like, um, this would be a lighter, so a fish, like what does a, a, Sau a Sauvignon Blanc traditionally, what would you recommend it for? I would recommend it with any light meat. Um, so your poultry, any white meats, um, but it's also great as an aperitif. So if you're cooking dinner and you want something light to drink as basically a liquid appetizer, this is the wine for you. <laughs> <laughs> liquid appetizers. Liquid appetizers in Canada. We <laughs> us Americans do something. Not to be confused with liquid uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yeah, uh, yeah, none of those. No one would <laughs> ever do those during quarantine or during a work meeting. Hey, you gotta Absolutely do. Absolutely not. You gotta do. No, exactly. Listen, <laughs> this wine is fantastic, and you know I'm not just saying that because you guys have supported us. I've been a huge fan ever since <laughs> I opened up these these I'll bottles for sure. Um, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, we want some. We want some." I'm looking in, um, looking in the comments. Make sure you guys, uh, we're ready for some Q and A. So please yeah, drop absolutely. your questions. I'm going to start with my first question, Devin. Thank you so much. We're going to bring back Devin for the second wine. Devin, this is delicious. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So I want to know how did you how did you get into acting? Oh, I got into. I mean, I took a pretty boring route. I also <laughs> quick question for you. My neighbor is singing. Can you hear me okay? No, I can't hear the singing at all. I don't know where it's coming from, but somebody is singing. Um, it's, it's, it's really sweet. I think he's playing his guitar too. I just, if it's distracting, let me know. It's not, I can't, I can't um, hear anything. Okay. I, um, I got into acting. I, um, it took a pretty basic route. I went to theater school. So I did a lot of like, I was really into sports too when I was in high school, I played a lot of basketball. So it was sort of like the fall was basketball season and then the spring I did the play. Um, 
And I knew when I was a really little kid, I watched, um, I love Disney movies, I love cartoons, and I watched the behind the scenes video of Beauty and the Beast, and I saw Angela Lansbury, who's Mrs. Potts, and there was a video of her in a recording booth with headphones doing the voice of Mrs. Potts, and it all sort of like clicked for me, and I remember telling my mom that I wanted to be the voice of the Disney characters, and then that's sort of how it started. And I just, I think there's something really magical about storytelling, and I always really loved theater. And I kind of, I thought I might go into theater. I just, I went to just a basic like theater school and studied more for the stage. But then I, um, when I was finished, I ended up, um, I ended up going and taking like more film classes. And, and then just through auditionings, I started booking more film work than I did theater and slowly started more working in film. But. Very cool. Mrs. Potts would be your Mrs. inspiration. Potts, like she was literally the inspiration. I think it was just the the fact that there was a person doing that. Like as a little kid, it was so mind blowing to me. Oh my God, that's a person. And then later I found out that it was her job. Like it wasn't just like someone paid her to do that. Right. And I was just like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. It's just the amazing, like the things that are out there that can inspire young kids or inspire anybody you know mm -hmm. what i mean so that's that's pretty amazing um you should hit up angela lansbury i really <laughs> should yeah <laughs> all right so hold on i think we have our first question mm -hmm. I, I is it niam niam uh asked what is your favorite winona one-liner from the show and mm -hmm. have there been any that you love but were cut from the show oh great question. man great question I'm sure there have been, Melanie always, Melanie who plays Winona always throws out amazing one-liners and she's so great with her improv. Um, I think one that sticks out of Nicole's is is the line, as long as you want me, I'll be by your side. Um, it's a really beautiful line, a beautiful <laughs> moment with Nicole and Waverly. And yeah. um, I think there's another moment we shot in season one where Nicole and Wav Waverly are just sort of starting to get together and. Waverly's kind of holding back and Nicole says to her, you know, I'd never want you to be someone you're not. And Nicole, I always, one of the things I love about her is that she's so, she's, she very much always lets Waverly work at her own pace um, and uh, never pushes her to do, to move faster in their relationship than she's ready for. She's a very patient and, and very empathetic person. And I think that's why I love one of the lines, but then I also love like top shelf. It's the first time we, we sort of see Winona and Nicole bonding and they're, they're drinking in the police station. And she, she comments on her ass being top shelf. And there's all these like really funny. I also really love um, Varun who plays Jeremy has a moment in episode seven of season three, where we're fighting a gnome, a giant no. Yes. Yes, I remember he, that. He takes this broom and he goes. He does the Gandalf, "You shall not pass." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's technically not a Winona Earp line, but it was a particularly favorite moment of mine. That episode was amazing. There's so many good ones, and there's like a billion that if I sat here for half an hour and could just wrap off. I also. It's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say there's so many amazing one-liners. I just I feel like I laughed throughout the entire show. Absolutely, yeah, totally. I just love the, I love the show for its ability to swing from like comedy to drama so quickly. You know that it's just yeah. it goes. It, I think that's such a mark of an incredible writing team and an amazing performer. Um, is their ability to kind of swing do those huge emotional swings sort of seamlessly. And I think that's what makes the show, I think it's why people love the show so much because mm -hmm. you feel all the feelings and you go on all the journeys in one episode. That's true. That's yeah. really true. Yeah. Um, that was a great question. Thank you, Niam or Niam. Uh, we have a question from Lee Silver. If you could give your or any character one piece of advice to prepare them for season four, what would it be? Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> season four is nuts. We are, we're coming into season four. I mean, we've just lost Waverly and Doc into the garden. We don't know where Robin, Jeremy, or Nicole are, and Winona's left without her gun. Um, so there is a, um, I know what's happening over here. 
this is actually really nice. So my neighbor who's singing, <laughs> he, this is actually, I need to share this because it's really amazing. Please, please. Um, he does a concert. He's been doing it ever since like the protest started every mm -hmm. week for our neighbors and he raises money for Black Lives Matter. Oh, that's what's happening. I didn't oh, really see awesome. that, that. I can't see him, but that's what's happening right now. Hey, so if that like inspires it. anyone. I I'll love it. That. I, that's, this, that's, it's perfect timing. Perfect it's timing. absolutely perfect timing. Yeah. I um, love that. Yeah, we'll give him much love. Yeah, for me. he's amazing, and he's been doing it every week in the neighborhood gathers. But he's—you can usually see him, but he's doing it in a place. I just wanted to share that because um, I just thought what he was doing was so amazing and such an amazing example of someone in their in their way with their talents giving back. Pretty cool. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and allyship um, and support and all of that is Absolutely. super important. I don't know who he is, but either way, supporting allyship and just yeah. uh, taking a stand is so important right yeah. now. So that's Absolutely. awesome. This is great. Cool. It's perfect timing. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm i sorry, Ebony. I've, I've lost. No, it's okay. No, you answer. You said buckle up. I think that's a buckle great. Buckle up. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it, it's These episodes are so crazy. I was actually yesterday just doing some more ADRs, which is the audio recording that we do sometimes. They don't get the, the sound super clean on set. So we go back and we dub our own voices. Right. And there's one episode, and I, I'll try to explain it without spoiling all of it, which will be impossible. But there's an episode where... Um, I am flipping between, oh man, how do I say it without, there's a, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of voices I'll say. Yeah. And I was doing the audio and watching the footage yesterday and just thinking, this is nuts. And then we went moved later in the episode and I said to the guys in the booth, I was like, this is in the same episode. This all happens in one episode. Cause you sort of forget because you're just shooting in this. Like you're not shooting in order, so you sort of lose track of where things happen. Um, right. But I think it's our craziest season yet. Everything's gone to hell in a handbasket, and uh, buckle up would be, uh, can't would be my, my line. Can't wait. I'm going to do one more question, and then I want to try the uh, uh, the next wine. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what this this is, but apparently you might. Cat, what's the state of the strawberries you were growing? <laughs> I'll show you. Oh, this is great. I love my Jeep 77. Good looking out, my friend. Also, while we're waiting for uh, Kat, uh, I see donations are coming in. Thank you so much, you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The state of the strawberries. So, Ebony, what I did, I was like online watching some stupid video one day where they claim that you could grow a strawberry bush from, stra you know, from like cutting the exterior of the strawberry where the seeds live and planting it. So I attempted to do that in this pot. As you can see, this pot work, <laughs> became compost for this pot, which I very quickly scorched, and it is now, I think, dead. And <laughs> it needs to be replaced. So this is what happened to the strawberries in two, in two phases. This is a bit of a fail. It's still hanging on. Like, I feel bad because I'm like, should I let it go? But look how hard it's trying. It is kind of trying. It is. It's like, should I give, should I have this one little leaf in this pot? Or I don't know. I don't know what to do because I don't want to give up on it. But also, so now I'm not sure what to do. What made you want to grow strawberries? Oh, God. It was so dumb. I was just like. One of those mindless videos that you watch online, and, and it was like, I can do that. <laughs> was that? And then you're like, I can do that. Exactly. And it was like all these food scraps and how you grow them into like an avocado pit, and then you have an oh, avocado okay. tree. But of course, it's, I mean, maybe if I planted, I don't know, a hundred strawberry scraps, maybe something would grow. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that question. I had no idea, but uh, thank you. I love my Jeep 77. All right, let's bring Devin back in. Yeah. Um, let's keep the party going. Hey, Devin. I um, was not crying about the state of your strawberries just now. <laughs> I was so worried. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> A for effort, though. Um, so we are going to be trying the Lining Dove Rosé now. Um, Matt, I know that you had some of this already while painting. Like I mentioned, um, 
I am a huge rosé fan. So anytime that I get the chance to sell it, drink it, try new rosés, absolutely love to. Um, the Line and Dove Rosé is actually the newest wine to our Line and Dove family. Um, really? I didn't even know that. Yeah, we just released it in, I want to say February or March. Maybe early February. I think it was like right before my birthday. The month of love. Oh, yeah, a a month of love. That's perfect. Exactly. Yes. Um, so it is the newest edition of the Line and Dove family. Um, this is actually made, and especially for people that love dry red wines like yourself, Kat, mm -hmm. uh, these are made with dry red wine grapes. So all of your rosés are just the summertime lover's dream of who actually likes dry reds. Um, this is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. So usually your dry red that most people pick up in the store are the very lush, jammy uh, red wines made with Cabernet. This is just a rosé made with uh, Cab grapes. And why is it this is such a newbie, like basic question? So, so is it the amount of times the grapes are pressed, the filtration process? Like, obviously, you're getting two very different products out of the same grape. So, how does that work? Absolutely. <laughs> hold on, um, hold on. I kind of low key feel like Kat is asking these questions because she's still trying. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Like, I gotta ask all these questions. Just keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. Keep talking. I didn't even notice. You're doing a great job. I, I had to open them up before because I knew. You're smart, I, Ebony. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just there. Saying. You go. You got it. Bottle openers. You got it. Um, I can always smell the cork, which I'm also not quite understanding. But maybe we'll get to that after. I mean. You can smell the aroma of the wine sometimes in the court, depending on how you um, carry what it in your house so and store it. Do this more more elegant. Yeah, no, yeah. There's no rules. Really. This is no exactly bottle. you. That one's better. <laughs> yeah, it's just like right out of the bottle. Um, but no, it actually depends on the contact with the skin of the grapes. So these are all you know very dark red grapes to begin with. For instance, um the lining Dove Rosé made with the Cab grapes from Chile. Um, but it just depends on how long the winemakers let the skins um, macerate with the, um, uh, with the wine itself, with the juice. Um, so technically, like when you're making uh, your dry reds, usually, I mean, the skins can be on there for, let's say, weeks or months if you're making an actual Cabernet Sauvignon. With your Rosé, it might be from six to 48 hours. Oh, wow. Uh, longer than two days, it's okay. going to look a lot different. And even your harvest, depending, will make the rosé look different. But that's why the rosés, I absolutely love dry red wines. But don't think that you're any less of a man or whatever for enjoying rosés because it's... <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> often feel like I'm less of a man for enjoying rosés. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I always mess with my coworker, Barry, because he's always like, real men drink rosés. And I'm like, yeah, they do. And we... Um, for our other virtual tastings that we do on DMV. And, uh, this one. Yeah. Especially yeah. And this rose is by far one of my favorite I've ever tried. And I'm not even saying that because I obviously work for Lion and Dove. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's fantastic. It's a very shareable, same as the Sauvignon Blanc, but well balanced rose. So, um, awesome. yeah, actually, a friend of mine started uh, his own wine company and he just does roses. Good for him. Dedicated to the perfect rosé. That's his. Uh, that's his. His thing. His passion. So I love cheers, it. guys. Cheers. Cheers. I don't even know where my thing is. There it is. Yeah, I know. Cheers. Think, also, shout out. About this. Exactly. Like, yeah. The opposite <laughs> that's of what we do. That's me. You go right. You will go left on the screen. <laughs> this is going to be an issue. I feel pretty good with this, you guys. Um, also, cheers, Chelsea M. Happy twenty second birthday. I, I think it's twenty second. You better be twenty second if. 22 if you're in here happy, happy birthday, birthday. Happy happy birthday. birthday. It was on the 22nd one of those but anyway happy birthday chelsea happy birthday <laughs> yes the, uh, the rosé yeah. by far is my favorite line and dove wine hands down mm. oh, thank you are you um, usually a rosé drinker ebony is that your like what is your usual go-to rosé is definitely the go-to for like the summer like mm. hot you know what I mean? I, I love drinking outside. Like I miss obviously with COVID and, and being quarantined and everything. Uh, can't really do that that much, uh, 
that much these days, but I love just like sitting outside on a balcony or on a patio or a bar or something and just yes. chilling and drinking. I don't know what it is. It's nothing like that feeling. Yeah. Um, so rose is like my summer go to mm -hmm. for the wine, for yeah. sure. Hands down. Uh, and then the Pinot is like my nightcap. <laughs> Pinot Noir. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. And we're not using that this evening, but Kat has some no, of that. We are. We are not. But <laughs> I'm just saying that that right. is cool. Um, and let me just make sure, because uh, I know you guys are cheersing and talking about wine. I want to make this very clear. If you do want it shipped to you within the United States and you're not in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, yeah. there is a place called Paul's. You just do Paul's Liquor D.C. or Paul's D.C. Paul's Paul's Wine and Spirits. There it is. Paul, Paul's and Wines and Spirits. I'm just Freaked naming out. stuff out. <laughs> anyway, you go there. You can actually order online or you can give them a call and they can ship it out to you. Um, so we are going to be doing these wine tastings again and we'll put that out there. Um, so unfortunately, if you aren't in the DMV area, as we call it, DC, Maryland, Virginia, you can go to Paul's Wine and Spirits. Uh, give them a call or go ahead and order it on their form and they'll ship the wines right to you. So we don't want you guys to be left out. Nice. Absolutely. And Ebony, how are we doing on the fundraising front? Thank you. You guys are, they're cutting up. Let's see. We are almost at a thousand. Right now we're at $980. So that means right, twenty more dollars we will have a thousand dollar donation to the tax scholarship fund. But something tells me we're going to do a lot more than that. Um, with you workers, uh, watching and, and supporting us. So I really appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Um, mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is not only supporting for women businesses, um, but you're allowing us to uh, print our magazines, pay our staff, and just be able to get through this pandemic uh, this year so we can continue to tell our story. So uh, thank you, Kat, for reminding me that we're almost at $1,000. Amazing. Absolutely. Awesome. So good. Yep. So, so and good. make sure if you see on the bottom of the screen there, guys, go and like Line and Dove. We have like 750 people watching right now. If all of you go and like our Facebook page, that's one dollar per like on Line and Dove uh, wines. All going towards the Tags Magazine Scholarship Fund. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Devin. Can you from this platform? Tamara's asking, can you donate from this platform? I don't know quite what that means. No, um, like right here on Facebook Live and, and YouTube Live, unfortunately, no, you guys have to go to the website. But listen, I know sometimes you don't want to miss what's going on. Um, so I just say after this, uh, go to supporttagmagazine.com and donate after. It's okay if you don't donate now. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's the thought that counts. Uh, it's not about the timing. We're not going to fault you if you didn't do it at 740 <laughs> as opposed to nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, so, but thank you for asking. Unfortunately, no, we can't do it right here. Um, so go to the website after, um, maybe you'll be nice and tipsy and, and even donate a little bit more. more. If you yeah. To. So you guys can see it on the, on the little scroller at the bottom. It's www.supporttag with two G's magazine.com. Yes. So go there or like open up a second tab on your browser. Um, it's for an amazing cause and uh, we're just got to show up burpers. I know that you guys are, are the most supportive and amazing fan base out there. And um, we just got to show up for, for women's queer media and for this amazing scholarship fund. So I'm so glad you guys are here and we're doing this. And I, I know we're going to get you to your goal, Ebony. I know we're going to you. I appreciate that. Well, let's, let's do it. We're going to finish our rosé and answer some questions. Devin oh will get us more drunk in a bit. I will. All right. <laughs> I will. I, feel, I have to be careful. Yeah. I have to slow, slow down a little bit. I've been drinking too fast. I poured a very generous, glass of the first one so yeah me too i was like mm, maybe well, don't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see okay uh this is an interesting question from corinne who would survive a zombie apocalypse you dominique melanie or tim Oof, good question that's a great question i don't know my mind's flipping between a few i well, tell us why you would think. Yeah, Say, why, why would couple think and why you think they would survive it. I think, well, Dominique's done some really crazy travels, like hitchhiking through Brazil, through the Amazon. And she 
is really she's a tough girl she's a tough lady and i think um i think she from all her travel experiences would be well well equipped to survive the zombie apocalypse um i think she would really be able to keep calm head because i think part of it is just just keeping your head on and not letting your emotions kind of take over and i think she would be really good for that because i know she's been in some crazy situations on her travels mm. maybe dominique okay i think i would be i would be really good at mobilizing or organizing something but i think i would i remember one time at my friend's cottage this is not a zombie apocalypse but we got lost <laughs> in the woods, like legit lost Mm -hmm. and I freaked out. I thought I would be much cooler and more collected than that, and I I freaked out. Um, so <laughs> I wonder if I would keep my wits about me. That would be my concern with myself. I think Dom. I think she's the most adventurous of the bunch. Yeah, you know how, like, when you watch, like, uh, scary movies and stuff, and you're like, oh, my God, why would she do that? I can't, why didn't you just run? But then when the shit gets real, <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's, it's not the person, always like that. It's the person who can control their emotions the most. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so Dom for the win. Dom for the win. Awesome. All right, let's see what our next question is. These things are coming in fast. Let's see. What was your favorite scene to film in Good Witch? From what we've oh. seen so, from what we've seen so far, from Sophie. Sophie. Um, my favorite scene, there was a scene in, um, gosh, I think it was episode three where the Mary Wick women find this like dream candle that their ancestor made and they, they decide to light it. Um, my, but the reason it was my favorite scene is because it was the first time I had worked with both Catherine Bell, who plays Cassie and Sarah Power, who plays Abigail mm -hmm. in a scene. And, um, there's a line in there where um, she ha one of them has to guess what the other's thinking. And she's like, I think you would like a chocolate glazed donut hole. And all of us were just like, what is this line? How do we make it sound good? And we're dying. Like it was so bad, this line. Um, but it was a great memory because it, I got to bond with these girls, but it was like, oh my God, really? Did you tweet about this? No, no, I didn't. Okay, I, I don't didn't want to be disrespectful. I something about a chocolate and a donut or something. Yeah, well, maybe someone else did because it's, okay. I mean, it stands out <laughs> as an exceptional piece of dialogue. We were all like, are you guys for real? You want us to say this? Who wrote this line in the script? Um, they just went for it, even though everybody was like, maybe not. They were like, go ahead and do it. So to try and get it out. And and um, it was sometimes you come across some lines where you're like, did anyone proofread this? Did anyone read this out loud? Um, <laughs> but um, it was a, a special memory for me because it was. I felt like that was the day I really bonded with those ladies. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice to feel like that was the day I sort of felt myself relax into the new environment because i'm new to the show and they've been doing this show for like 10 years so i mean they did movies and then now they're doing the show so it was just really nice to feel like okay i'm i i, I always felt welcome but it was where i kind of let my guard down a little bit and right. I really felt like i was in the team and yeah that was that was nice but yeah that line man <laughs> lord help us and thanks, Sophie, uh, uh, for mentioning Good Witch. I'm, uh, you're also on Working Moms as well. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, in addition to, obviously, Winona Herb. So good shout out for that. Um, Serena wants to know, how has, wait. Bernie. Wait, how has Bernie been doing in quarantine? He's oh, been amazing. Was, oh, my God, this makes so much sense now. So somebody on our Twitter was like, is Bernie going to be there? And you were like, I, was, I thought they meant like Bernie Sanders. And I'm like, I thought it was some smart ass <laughs> tweeting us. <laughs> and it's your dog. No, he's Got right it. on my feet. Hang on. Hey, Bernie. Oh. Come here for a sec. Come here. Oh, it's a good boy. Come on. Come up. Come on up. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, hey, Bernie. Not to be confused with Sanders. How are you? <laughs> oh. Not oh, look at him. 
he's the best. How long have you had Bernie? I've had Bernie. He's almost, he'll be five in January, so he's four and a half. And I um, got him at, at 12 weeks old. Wow. He's the he's best. He's baby, baby. He's my baby. He's the best. I love him so much. Um, uh, yeah. He's, I love he's super cute. He's really cute. I just woke him up, so he's like, why? He's but like, what is going on here? He's, he's <laughs> killing it. He's, oh, now he's. He's like, bye, thanks. You're done? It's okay, you can come back later. Everybody's saying, hey, Bernie, hey, Bernie. In, the, in the comments over here. Uh, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's living his best life. He, I mean, he goes on, like, hikes every day, and we're home all the time. That's the problem. I'm worried for all the dogs when we all start going back to work. You know, like, what? They'll be like, where did everybody go? But he's yeah. been great. Yeah. Now, I'm a cat person. The cats will be fine. Completely. The cats are like, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> that cat's like, oh, oh come on, what are you going? Still here. Oh, now he's gonna, now he's gonna chill for a bit. Oh, here we are. Okay, Barney. So right now, Bernie is saying uh, we are at sixteen hundred dollars, and yeah. Bernie wants us to get to two thousand yeah. dollars in ten minutes. That's I'm hearing it first here from okay. Bernie. Okay. That's what Let's do minutes. it. All right. We can do Let's, it. Uh, are you are you ready for the third wine? I am, but you know what, Ebony, before we keep drinking, I want to talk about the articles that you sent me. Yes. Because um, you sent me some really amazing articles. And, it's time um, to get real. It's time to get real. Let's get real yeah. a little bit before we keep drinking and we and getting and real. It real, real. becomes more <laughs> difficult. But, Ebony, you sent me some amazing articles that talk about, um, when you had originally sent them to me, I thought you were talking about Grants, but I, I I misheard you, and what you were talking about is actually loans. That is much it's more everything, it's everything across the board. That it's much more difficult for black owned owned businesses to get loans from banks. And as we know, being a small business owner, you are you are dependent on these loans and these financial aids to get your business up and running. And you sent me some really amazing articles, and I just wanted to make sure that during this session that we talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And um, that. yeah, and and bring bring that to light a little bit. And um, I I jotted down some like really quick things that stood out to me from the articles. But um, that banks are really have um, so so just to, to uh, start off, we're talking about um, that black owned small businesses have a harder time getting financial aid, whether that be grants or bank loans, to run their businesses. And it often makes it much harder for small black owned businesses to survive in the long term. And that it's a, a really very real, statistically very obvious when you look at the numbers problem. And um, I think one of the things that really stood out to me was that um, a lot of times in one of the articles you sent, they were saying that um, loan preference is given to people that they've lent to, the banks have lent to before, and also people who are coming in with more accumulated wealth. And if we look at the discrepancy in incomes by race, um, I'm, I'm not American, and um, I haven't looked at those numbers in Canada, but from what I've read a little bit about in the States, um, I think obviously right there we have, there is an unfair um, discrepancy between um, between uh, Americans who are black who are starting their businesses and those who are not. And I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about that and help kind of people who are watching maybe learn about that a little bit more, understand that a little bit more. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, you know, uh, all businesses got hit really hard when the pandemic hit. Uh, and so all of us are out there trying to get PPPs, uh, meaning payroll protection program, loans, grants, all kinds of things, even donations from people. They're, you know, crowdfunding, things like that. Um, and statistically, we are seeing black owned businesses, especially black queer owned businesses, mm -hmm. getting uh, uh, nothing, rejected, getting less, two times more likely not to get the loans. Um, and it's really unfortunate. And you're right, there are a lot of things in, in play. Um, I know Forbes wrote a, a great uh, article on it as well. If people want to really look into this, really, you guys could just Google black owned businesses not getting money, literally. And there's tons of articles out there. Um, but I mean, I, I'm one of those people and it's not as far as, oh, nobody's giving us money. It's just literally I have seen our equivalents, our white equivalents immediately 
getting money, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, we're doing the same thing, but we're not really getting the same love, uh, which is okay. It just makes us stronger uh, and it makes us just work a lot harder. But unfortunately, we're seeing this too many times and the numbers are there, like you said. Yeah. Um, you know, they're and saying it's, it's not okay. More well. like it's, it's not okay. And we need, that's why we're. It's not okay. You're right. It's not okay. It's but I mean, right. I know where you're coming from, where you're, I love that, that you take that stance of like, it makes us stronger. We work harder, but but it's not okay. And that's it's why it's, 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 yeah. it's part of, right. It's yeah. part of the systematic racism, yeah. you know, that we're seeing more and more. And it's not just, you know, we don't need to get so deep into what's going on, but it's not just with police, right? It's yeah. so it's many so things systemic. in the system. Yeah. Just like you're saying, people want to give loans to, uh, to businesses that have built more wealth. Well, you're not giving us the money for us to build wealth. So how can we how get the money? Yeah. How we have to start somewhere. Somebody has to give us a start to be able to build the wealth. Uh, and unfortunately, there are just systems in place everywhere like that where just we don't have a head start. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so we just have to work really hard. And that's why it's important um, and not even important, just amazing to have people like you who understand that, who get it who realize that uh, our businesses are just as important as anybody else's businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and what I love about TAG, we're not just black you know, content, we're everywhere LGBTQ women content, no matter who you are, how you look, we're everyone. It just so happens that the business happens to be owned by a black queer woman. Um, and sometimes that has been a huge um, setback for for the business um so i want to see these things change and uh thanks to people like you bringing attention to it i hope it does and not just for me but for every black owned business out there we have to support each other the uh, black owned businesses across the country are just shutting down at rapid rates and yes because of the pandemic but more so than again our counterparts and that's because we're not getting the backing we're not getting the support um, that other people are getting. Yeah, absolutely. So well, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think maybe if, I think it's really important too to, I think the, the biggest thing that I've fortunately been hearing during the past month, especially is that everyone needs to take it upon themselves to educate themselves and to, you know, just be reading as much as we can and learning as much as we can and asking questions. And I think that's the, the biggest thing that I, I I don't I don't ever want anyone to be afraid to ask the questions. If you're coming and you're humbling yourself to the learning and your heart is in a good place of like I want help, I want to ask the questions and and learn how to best do that. Um, I think never be afraid to admit you don't know something or you're not as educated in a certain area or you don't understand something and take the steps to educate yourself. And I think um, that's important. Like you know we don't even have a fraction of the time it would take to be able to break this down and figure out why and figure out what can be done. But, but you guys do who are watching and we can all go on our own. And now that, you know, we're talking about and about the fact that it is an issue, I think it's important for everyone to take it upon themselves to go and learn more about this. I don't know, Ebony, if there's an, a way for you to drop those articles in the chat. I don't even know if. Yeah, I'll go ahead and, and drop that. those articles in for yeah. you all for Um also, um, just, yes, obviously money donations is always a great way to support businesses. Right way. Remember, there are other ways that you all can do it, um, whether it's through your jobs or personally. You know, for example, I was just on a panel um, and they were saying, hey, what if we're not like a CEO or we're not in the leadership roles to help diversity? Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what vendors are you using, for example? Who's printing your posters? Who's doing this? Try yeah. to go to black owned businesses or LGBTQ owned businesses or black trans owned businesses. You know, um, the folks that usually don't get the love. There are so many things you all can do. You know, are you who's your latest t shirt that you want to buy? I just bought a t shirt that says, Not today, Satan, for my next protest <laughs> march that I'm going to do. But, you know, black owned business. Um, yeah, absolutely. Little things that we can do like that to really support. Um, and, and, you know, everything from even likes, like uh, Devin was talking about, um, just liking. It's cost you nothing to go like their page. And now you have contributed to a young queer woman of color's education. There are so many different things we can be doing. Absolutely. Um, 
So yeah, I want to just make sure I put that out there too, because I realize times are hard. Not everybody has the money. Um, so there are other ways that you can give back in various ways for sure. Um, and just so you know, we are at $2,800. Yeah, you know, we might hit our five thousand. We just might hit it. Oh, Erpers, Erpers, man, so I mean, amazing, amazing, amazing. Whoo, you guys are just absolutely amazing. Anyway, all right, right are, are we ready for the next one? Let's do it. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Devin, take one final. Oh. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like I have to chug a lug. Oh, yes. I yeah, do that sometimes for my different. virtual tastings. Now, Ebony knows go, I do virtual go, go. tastings <laughs> on uh, DMV Distributing's Facebook page every Friday evening. I have winemakers from around the world, but sometimes I will talk too much, and then I have to chug like that last bit of the glass because you don't want it to go to waste, everyone. And But I also... I'm working, so it's really hard for me. <laughs> wow, that is a generous glass that you're that's giving. A generous glass. Wait a second. <laughs> you're opening. That's a red. Why do I have the this? Party snacks. That's the Moscato that you're you have. And with the party wine. This oh, this is the party wine. Yeah. The Moscato. Okay. Yes, yeah, the party one's the Moscato. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, as so you yeah, can tell us about it. Sure. So, the Carmen Year, um, everyone, it is a super amazing uh, grape. Um, it is a grape varietal. For those of you that aren't familiar with wine, there are over 10,000 different varieties of grapes, over 10,000 different varietals. Um, obviously, when you go to the store, you know your Cabernet Sauvignons, your uh, um, Pinot Noirs, but the Carmenere was actually one of the first main six Bordeaux grapes in France. But as it turns out, over 135 years ago, it was wiped out by the flocks through France, and it was considered completely extinct. So this came from one of the top six grapes in all over the world of, yes, this is our one of our great fancy Bordeaux style dry red wine grapes, and it disappeared. So this wine is known as the lost grape. This grape is known as the lost grape um, because then it was only found just about 25 years ago in Chile. And I know I wrote uh, Kat, she had opened this. Yeah, yeah, I love the first bottle, And she's texting me and she's like, well, but what grape is this? And I was like, well, I absolutely love to send, you know, even when we do the virtual tastings or I do public tastings, I love to bring the Carmenere out because of this story. And I think that eventually there honestly might be movies about this already, but I think it's so interesting, Ooh. especially those of you that are in media and an actress like yourself and, you know, Ebony writing articles and bringing it all together. Um, this lost grape actually was taken from uh, France and, and they thought that it was Merlot. And it was actually some Spanish conquistadors that were going and pillaging in Chile and they brought a lot of vines to grow so that they could stay hydrated while they were pillaging because like you don't want to go thirsty guys yeah. <laughs> especially with water yeah stay hydrated while they're pillaging <laughs> <laughs> that's the quote of the night thank you <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, I feel like that's something that winona would say on the show just like you yeah. know you know while they were pillaging they needed some <laughs> red wine um so they thought that it was merlot the humidity and climate in Chile is fantastic for these dry red grapes to grow really well. And lo and behold, after a DNA test over 135 years later, and a couple of people were like, this is not Merlot. They had actually saved what was last um, existing of the Carmenier grape. And there we have it. So this from Chile, from the source that they found it in 135 years later. Um, Kat, I know that oh, you enjoyed so your, your first bottle. Yeah. It's so When sweet. I die, I want to be just like blessed with this. So, <laughs> you know, like I, I just, there's something about the smell of this wine that is so. Mm -hmm. It's like spicy. Yeah, it smells exactly. like spicy. It, you know what it kind of reminds me of, and there's a question for you, Devin. By the way, I'm gonna pull up. Sure. Um, it reminds me of what it um, uh, starts with the M. Melback. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it, it it's is. Still, I mean, it's 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 similar. actually more delicious, but it, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, it, it tastes a little bit more silky and smooth to me than some Malbecs that oh, are definitely. usually from Argentina is like the main Malbec spot in the world. 
Um, but yeah, uh, Heather, Devin, I don't drink a lot of wines because all I taste is the, the fermentation, if you will. But what could I drink that's not like that, dry or not? Um, so Heather, I think what you're trying to ask is about the tannins that we were talking about earlier, like the acidity that comes from when you do ferment grapes. Um, the line and dove wines are so well balanced that you don't have that really strong pucker power that wines that you can get in stores um, have of that really high uh, tannic acid. It comes in every time you're gonna ferment a grape, you're gonna have tannins, um, but especially in your dry reds, they're more, you can taste them more, especially if you get oaky reds, and you know, that's a whole other thing type of deal. Um, but yeah, with this and all the line and dove wines, what is so great about them, not only because they're vegan friendly, gluten free, kosher for Passover, um, they're very well balanced. So Heather, these are going to be very easy drinking wines for you. And their only average price is $12 in a store. And when you taste Love these that. wines, you think they're way more expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Catlin's be blessed with that one day. Price point. Average of $12 in a store. Yeah, that's an amazing price point. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, you mentioned you love, I, I know, right? Everyone, when I take them out, they're like, oh, this is going to break the bank. But I mean, I've seen some stores even lower than that. I mean, when we do our virtual. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We'll put them on special okay. in our store. People, you know, join in and awesome. they love it. Any, you, what did you, you do? Recommend... Oh, I like a little bit. Oh, sorry. Devin, what would you oh. recommend for a first time wine drinker? There's a question from Talbot. Mm. Like oh, just... So, most people start drinking wines with sweet wines like a Moscato. Mm -hmm. If you think back to your college days or even when you first drink wine, you always want something a little bit more juice like and sweet. And then your palate does kind of grow as you drink more wine. So, the Moscato that we're going to be drinking last is probably what would be the first the party wine. Yeah. yeah. I even remember in college starting to drink wine and um, I definitely went towards like sweeter reds and then progressed to drier reds. And then, I mean, now I drink and get to taste, you know, a variety, but I think that you'll never know what you like if you don't try it. So Give yeah. it a go. That's super why we're sophisticated in college. Yeah, I know. I was just. I was drinking like Maddie Boo, like wine his beer. <laughs> Ebony, I'll have you know, I played roller derby all throughout college, and at after parties, I would be the only one sitting there with a glass of wine. <laughs> I was gonna say you had to be the only one because that's not what I was drinking. <laughs> yeah, no keggers or anything. Just I don't even remember. Of I was like just drinking anything with alcohol in it. I was like, this is good. <laughs> Great. I don't know. It's good for your heart and it's good for your teeth in moderation. <laughs> is it good for your teeth? Yeah. Dry red wine is good for your teeth. Yeah, the bones of your teeth, it um, has antioxidants in it and everything. That is strong. Me. Oh. And my dentist told me that. That's not just fake facts on Facebook that I read. You think your wow. dentist told you that? Yeah. Were they just trying to butter you up so you'd bring some wine for your next appointment, though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that it's you fine, say whatever. that. Let's go with it. I mean, <laughs> leave it. They never got wine out of me, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, Kat, I know that you mentioned... Um, uh, when we first started talking about this tasting that you like jammy red wines. Now this one obviously isn't as crazy jammy as some wines, kind of your Zinfandels and stuff like that are very jammy. What do you think of the Carmenere? I like, I like it a lot. I, like Ebony said, there is like a spicy quality to it for mm -hmm. sure that I'm really enjoying. I love the smell as you can probably tell. I just keep on like, <laughs> so <laughs> nice about it. When you smell it, it, it really makes you want to drink it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it almost feels brighter than a than a than a jammy red. Like it's 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 like it's um this is so stupid because these are not the words you use to describe, but more energizing. Like it's more it's more like hey hey, it's like it's like a fun red rather a than little, like a chill mm -hmm. red that sits in the corner swirling their drink. Like if it had a personality. Okay. You know 
I like that. I might like steal that line from you in my next yeah, that's so we'll do it. more yeah, personality. Like, maybe yeah. workshop it a little bit, but you roll with that. Yeah, I, I will. I'll, I'll give you credit for it as well. Um, it, it is. This wine tastes a little bit more refreshing and yeah, it's, it's refreshing. A, a little bit younger right. and brighter than, mm -hmm. than most other dry red wines. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one that you could easily drink a few glasses of and not feel, especially in the summertime. Mind you, you can chill your dry reds. Don't be afraid, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and especially even if you chill this, it's going to taste even brighter to you and more refreshing. So... Don't be afraid. Try new things. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I never uh, know about chilling, chilling the reds. That's I'm always unsure of. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I to try that. Us Americans and probably Canadians as well drink our dry red wines way too warm on uh, average. You're going to drink it at room temperature, which is around 70 or so degrees, depending. Um, what the winemakers really want you to drink your wines at is around 52 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Really? Mm -hmm. So they want you to drink them a little bit chilled. So next time you guys do get a bottle of um, red wine in the store, just put it in your refrigerator for about 15 minutes and then open it and see how much brighter and youthful it tastes. You're not going to ruin the wine. Don't yeah. worry. I would not recommend putting it in the freezer like I told you earlier with the other ones to get them chilled quickly. Get them chilled, but yeah, that was, that was, that was quick. That's yeah. a great idea. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you are welcome. Enjoy. You, well, a lot more questions, um, but you're going to come back with the Moscato, right? Which I oh, absolutely yeah. love. Thank you, Devin. Of course. All right. Um, all right. We right. have more questions to get to here. So really quickly, you like the you like the red. I like the red. I've always been a red fan. I'm a, I'm but I I'm getting more into like the rosés and the whites. I just don't love the acidity of a lot of the whites that I've had in the past. And I think that's why I always gravitate to the reds. I guess because yeah. they're more predictable. But like these ones we had earlier, are I don't find them super what I say puckery, and I'm not sure what the feeling is I'm trying to describe. But like where it sort of like gets you at the back of your jaw a little bit, you know? Um, okay. Welcome, okay, Kevin. He's like, I don't know what you're on about, but sure, I guess. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not quite sure. I guess it's just really acidic. I find them acidic. And a lot of the whites I've had are really acidic, whereas yeah. I like this like softer kind of warmth to a red. So I think that's why I gravitate, but I'm learning to find the right whites and the right rosés. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And, and and here we are. This is yeah. Line and Dove. Literally, you all, Line and Dove is the perfect place to start. Perfect yeah. place. And when when you taste the Moscato, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, let's get back to uh, the questions. Fallon Hunt wants to know, what was your absolute favorite episode to film from seasons one to three of Winona Earp? Oh, uh, man. I feel like I have so many moments. I think my favorite overall episode was probably season three, episode seven, the gnome wife episode with Jan Arden, who's like a Canadian icon. I don't know if you know who Jan Arden is, Ebony, but she's an amazing Canadian musician and a hilarious human being. And she guest starred on the episode and was so funny and so game to do anything. She's like a Canadian legend mm -hmm. and our director. We had this um, moment in the episode where she's allergic to cats and she comes to my my character Nicole. Yes, oh and her. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. And she plays Bunny, and our director Ron was putting. We were putting cat like so. She was face down on the carpet, and we were putting catnip on her bum so that the cat would go and sit I there for a few seconds so they could get this shot. And he was just like, oh, my God, I'm putting catnip on Jan Arden's ass. And she's lying on the floor like, what am I doing? This is this is like an offense to our country. Um, but I just, we had, like, such a great time. And it was such a wacky script. And it was so fun um, that that episode is really a, one of my the ones that stands out. But I also really loved, like, I'm constantly in awe because we're – you know, we always joke about being like the the budget Canadian shows, and they're like we don't we don't work with these huge American budgets. And so, um, for us, like I remember at the end of I guess it would have been season two, we got a helicopter, which was like really cool. 
So, you know, we got to shoot with this helicopter and the propellers are going and the wind is going. And those are the moments where you're like, holy fuck, I have the best, this is amazing. Like, what is this? I, like, is I can do this. This is, I can't believe this is my life. And I've had right. so many of those moments with Wine Owner, but I've had so many of those moments with just the fans and at convention. Like, like it's, I don't know. I'm going to be in my rocking chair one day. I always do everything with my life. I, I call it the rocking chair test of like, is this something when I'm looking back from the rocking chair that I will be proud of or that I will remember fondly? And that is always a really good barometer of how, if something's worth doing or not. And why no Nerp is one of those things where it will just constantly be this like source of incredible pride and joy for me. But there's so many of these little moments or even, um, Oh my gosh, there's so many. I mean, the helicopter one stands out. We had a, a ball at the end of season one where all yes. the girls came together. That stands out as a really special moment for me. We've had a few. Um, there's a particular set coming up in season four that is just this. It's a huge space with a staircase, and they built it in the studio. And I remember coming on set and being like, is this Winona Earp? Like, am I on the right <laughs> soundstage? Because this is massive and super impressive. Like our crew just, just above and beyond. And they're, they're pulling out so many stops. Like season four, there's some incredible things that have been built for the season. Another scene in season four um, where there's a scene. When I read the scene, I thought it was going to be done in sort of like the budget friendly way in the studio. And they, we actually did it for real. Um, which when people will see it, I think they'll know what I'm talking about. But I remember being like, wait, we're shooting it this way. And I'm just, so it's all these moments like that where there, it's a, an, a culmination of all these tiny moments. But I would say overall episode 307. I love it. Uh, yeah. And I love the rocking chair moment. I yeah. love that. So like, as you're deciding things, is this something that I can look back at? That's awesome. I feel like we're having like an Oprah aha moment right now. Right? Oh, Oprah. I, I, seriously. <laughs> That's I really like that moment. I'm, I'm Listen, so in love with her. If we were to talk about Oprah, we're going to be here all night. I love her as well. I, I love, love her, her so much. Like, honestly, I always say Oprah and Ellen are like the women who I never met that also sort of raised me because I would watch them every, I, I wasn't really super into, pe my friends always make fun of me because I don't know any pop culture references because I was like a theater nerd and then I played sports. I didn't like watch a ton of TV, but I always watch Oprah and Ellen. And I like have all Oprah's books and I listen to her super soul stuff. And I just, that woman like changed the world. I really do believe like she sh caused, like shifted a whole generation of people. Agreed. Agreed. It's oh. funny you said Oprah and Ellen because um, I forgot what my Twitter description of myself says. I think I said the illegitimate child of Oprah and Ellen. So oh, I she have joked with me. They were like, dude, if Oprah and Ellen had a baby, it would be you. <laughs> so oh when God. you said Oprah and Ellen, I was like, yes. Yes. I love, I love both of them for I sure. Love them. Oprah, for sure. My mom kind of looks like Oprah, so that's also no. a thing. Like, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, so yeah. I was like, I kind of live with Oprah a little bit. So. I remember visiting Oprah's Harper Studios in Chicago. We did like a family trip probably like 10 years ago. And I remember walking in there. It was just around the time that she was ending her show. Has that been more than 10 years? Like when she, I mean, oh, she, and then she like never really retired. She just completely shifted to own, like, she just, she just was like I'm going to own a network now. Yeah. She's like, I'm yeah. going to own everything and make, <laughs> I'm just going to do the same job, but like times 600. Right. <laughs> um, but she, I remember walking into the studio and just crying because it, it, it's just like, it was such a huge part of like, I think what, how, what shaped me growing up as a young person, especially as a teenage girl watching her and just like what she was doing and how she interviewed people and how she just cut through the bullshit and got to the heart of everything and how she always found the common human experience and all of these things that I just admire so much. And also just like she built a, a freaking empire is like an understatement. Like she, and especially as a woman, as a black woman in television, like it just like she, she defied every, all the odds. Yes. 
And yes. I, oh, I can't say enough about how much I love her. And then you want to know a fun story about Ellen? Just yeah, really quick. So <laughs> I got to go through a friend of a friend, got tickets to go see Ellen. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, I mean, I want a washing machine. That's it. I would got to wait go a minute, watch. Wait a minute. Hold on. I feel like you skipped. So, so much. So I got on her show and I just a t like an, an audience ticket. Yeah. And that, pre you know, you always are like, oh, I wonder if this show is going to be one where we like get a CD or something. And t I don't remember who the guests were, but we won <laughs> probably because I didn't know who any of them were because I know nothing about pop culture. But, um, <laughs> but we won a uh, washer and dryer. So there was four of us so there. Random. <laughs> I know we won. I mean, we sold it and then I used the money. I was going to say you either sold it or you I sold it because it was in the States and I was like, I don't live here, but they wouldn't deliver. Oh. It time, but it was amazing. And, um, but, uh, it was just really fun. And we got tickets. To, like I brought my niece and nephew, like the, the kids choice awards. And so it was like, so cool. not only did we get to go see Ellen and then my friend who's like this really awesome, fun, enthusiastic woman, like, she's like loud and fun and I'm shy and reserved and she's dancing and they like pulled her out of the audience and they asked her if she would come back to play a game at a next show. And then she went back and she played the game and she sprained her ankle and she's a yoga instructor. And then they had to, they had to pay for her workers comp. It was like such a, anyways, sorry. So no, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Listen, I can talk about this. That's only. my, that's my Ellen show. Sorry, I got us a little bit. No, you want you want a washer and dryer. I bet I bet folks are now learning new things. It was awesome. I didn't know about Bernie. Everybody knew about Bernie, but I guarantee they didn't know about the washer and dryer for Ellen. Yeah. See, I was, you, know, I was, when you guys tune in to virtual wine tasting. See what happens. You learn new things. Um, oh, we have a new question, Emily uh, Wan. If you had a talk show, what would you call it? Perfect. Perfect. I would call it cat naps, cat naps. Ooh. And it would be like a little break from the day to have a bit of indulgent enjoyment. I am There's impressed. nothing better than taking a little cat nap in the middle of the afternoon. So it would be like just a place to like chill and relax and have like a little levity, a little enjoyment. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm impressed with that name. Think Listen, coin that now. Coin that now. Yeah, yeah. I'm impressed with that. Actually, I'm like, that's not bad. Awesome. <laughs> that was a perfect question, Emily. Thank you. Um, a couple more. Kat, if you have children in the future, what advice would you give them? Wow, you guys are really good with these questions. Good. Travel. That's the advice. I think when I mm. one of my regrets and thank somebody's looking out for me because I've been given this gift with doing conventions. Um, but when I was in theater school, I remember going to my audition and the head of the school came to like talk to everyone before we did our auditions. And he said to us, if there's anything you want to do, if you want to travel, if you want to take other courses, if you look, like, whatever you want to do, do it now. Because once you graduate this program, it will be very hard for you to get away. And the thing is, as actors, you're kind of like on call because you're sort of waiting for the phone to ring and you don't want to leave because then you can't go for auditions and then you don't work. So you're always sort of like sticking around and waiting. And he was so right because after college, I, I didn't want to travel because I was worried I was going to miss opportunities for work. And I regret, like, I didn't do the backpacking thing. I didn't do like the debaucherous trip to Thailand. Like I didn't, those kind of, beautiful moments that I really wanted to have, I didn't have. And I've made up for it in incredible ways and been given opportunity to travel um, through work, which has been incredible. But I think as a young person, and also like, don't worry about getting the job by the mm. time you're 25. Like, take your time and work crappy jobs and have that be, motivation for the thing that you don't want to do, you know, which I think can be almost stronger than going for the thing you do. Like when you work those really crappy jobs, you're like, well, I don't want to do this for long. So I better yeah. figure my shit out, you know? So I think there's so much value in just like taking some time to explore the world, travel, work a couple dumb jobs and, and don't put so much pressure on yourself to, to get there by the time you're 25, because in retrospect, it's, it's, it's nothing. 
What yeah. advice would you give your young self, Ebony? Or your, oh, ch or sorry, uh, yourself, your children? I always say the first thing I would say is save. Save immediately. Save. Save. Because uh, yeah. I mean, we don't really think about that when we're young. Um, and depending on what type of family you grow up in, like that yeah. stuff is not necessarily like really taught, you know? Yeah. It's amazing to me the things we learn in school still. And I'm like, man, we should be learning like how to balance a checkbook. Dude, basic, okay. basic things that we yes. do. Like, why are we? I, I don't know. It's just weird. Some of the stuff that yeah. I think we're we're still learning in school. So, yeah, I would tell my younger self, listen, you're gonna have some weird things you'll never use in school, but what you will use is money. Start saving, yes. learning about stocks and all of that. I'm totally Capricorn too. So Capricorns, this is how we also are think. Capricorns very strategic. Yeah, we're like strategic. Yeah, we're like business minded, strategic, very like. To the point, you know what I mean? If that yeah. makes any sense. Any Capricorns out there, shout yourselves out. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but that would be probably the first thing that I would say is definitely save. Um, and I love the travel. I think I have to piggyback off of that for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I would say probably one of the regrets I have is not traveling a lot mm -hmm. more sooner. Like I had some great experiences where like in high school, I was able to live with the family in Spain and things like that. But I wanted to oh, France right. and all of that. But I, I wanted to, I wish that I had to travel more, but yeah. I can still do that now. But yeah, I love the traveling. I yeah. really love that. And I'm, I'm blessed because, you know, I've been every now and then I'll get asked to speak or talk or do panels in different places and it allows me to travel that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say anybody out there, if you get the chance to do it, life is too short. Life mm -hmm. is too short. And as Kat said, in your rocking chair, you don't want to look back and be like, man, I wish I hadn't done this. I wish I hadn't done that. You know, that's great yeah. advice. I mean, that's I great advice. Been, you are a woman after my own heart. I literally like was just a few days ago having, I, so I, some rivers may have heard me talk about finances on panels. And I remember they did a question and they asked the whole cast and Dom was like, you know, the power of meditation. And she's super into that and behind that. And my answer was, learn your shit about your money and take care of your money. And I am so with you. I think we leave students leaving school financially illiterate. It should be as important as reading and like your basics. I, I just, I actually, it's so funny because I've had this little kernel of I, an idea that I wanted to put a program in place for high schoolers to learn about money. Cause I don't understand why they don't teach like why is it really bad to get into a ton of credit card debt when you're 18 well because it will haunt you for the next 20 years so right. all these things and we don't teach our young people and if you don't come from a family who's savvy with money you're not going to learn that so then these like barriers you're just are just you're starting life like three steps behind because you're not coming in with that and like you know, the power that financial financial security gives us to pursue our dreams and what we want because we're not tied down with the, I mean, man, I was so broke in my 20s when I started acting. I told a story and I'll tell it here that like I um, was working at a restaurant and I would like, so embarrassing, but hear me out. I was like, <laughs> okay. dude that people like clearly hadn't touched. It was me and this other busser. And we would like, cause I had like no good, f I had no money. Like it was ridiculous, but that taught me so much mm. about um, just like the importance of saving and being strategic and educating yourself on, like you said, like stocks. And I've just now over during COVID uh, took an online financial course to learn more about that. And you can get, you can learn so much on YouTube but I do agree with you. We are doing our young people a massive disservice by not teaching this in school. It's incredibly unfair. Because oh. it's one thing that universally, like I'm not gonna use chemistry, but we will all use money. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's so true. I always say, I feel like we are um, learning the same things our parents did, like the same curriculum from the 50s. Is yeah. Still happening now. Yeah. You know, like, listen, wood shop, baking, great. You know what I mean? But come on, y'all. There are so many yeah. I wish there were other options like finance or things like that for sure. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll see that in our lifetime, that I school systems do. will change uh, for sure. But yeah, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to, to that. Yeah, about finance. 
look. You see how I can't figure out where? <laughs> no, I know. Just forward. This one is not a left or right. This is just a forward. <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right. Um, I'm going to check the money, but I'm going to bring Devin yeah, back. Please. Oh, speaking of money, money. Uh, let's, let's do it. this uh, Moscato. Devin. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you all have an extra glass? I know Kat still has some of her Permanier in there. Were you prepared? Oh yes, I brought four. Oh dang! Oh, I don't know how to get this. Very prepared, uh, Devin. I don't know how to get the. It doesn't matter. The yeah. um. The oh my god. Uh, oh, let's see here. One. I do minute. have another glass. Part of me is there like, do I want to get up and show what I have on underneath? <laughs> I don't think we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be like. We <laughs> <laughs> just wear shorts or whatever. It's like. I'll be right back. It matters. Yeah, you were safe. We didn't see it. <laughs> All right, so as Kat is opening her Moscato here, we're not going to pay attention to her in case she struggles with this one. I'm not, no. Um, <laughs> I would never make fun. Um, no, please do it. It's, so it's with this Moscato, I absolutely love um, showcasing a sweet wine, especially to these, because even if you tend to like your drier, jammy red wines, um, a lot of people forget and they feel bad if they like sweet wine, like Moscato. Um, but one fun fact is that Moscato is actually the Italian name for the Muscat Blanc, which is one of the oldest uh, varietals of grapes in the entire world. So really the Moscato grape itself is one of the oldest grapes that ever existed. So why would you feel ashamed about enjoying sweet wine? If anything, if you enjoy any wine at all, you're keeping me in a job. So thanks, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> but somebody somebody you know, is I'm making fun of uh, her. I have a little bit of an issue. Yeah, you know, we're just, I was trying to talk her through it over here to. No, it's funny. Somebody's making fun. They said cat in these wine bottles is like cat in the house. <laughs> I, did. I had the thought before this too. I was like, you should really was... open these before. Yeah. It's okay. We, listen, mm -hmm. we love you. Oh, we're just teasing. Got it. Please, because we love. <laughs> Great work. Now, when you pour this wine, you'll be surprised because it does have a bit of an effervescence to it. So you're going to see a little bit of bubbly in there. And a lot of Moscatos don't have that like bubbliness like you would find in a Champagne or Prosecco. The best part about the bubbly of the Line and Dove Moscato is that it lasts the whole way through the end of your bottle. Wow, it is right? lovely. I was not expecting that. Yeah, so very also celebratory, super delicious. Good. But it's not a, um, I know champagne, you cannot call champagne unless it's from the champagne region, but 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 this is would not be considered a sparkling wine. No, I would just classify it as a sweet white wine Moscato with effervescence to it. I love that word. A little bit of effervescence. It's really, it's really good. So I would say you answered a question. Um, I can't remember the person's name, but um, they were asking about the first wines. Ooh, it's I, this wine, the Moscato, um, to someone who's they're not a big drinker at all, like rarely, and they're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, you know what? I feel like you're going to like this Moscato. Loved it. They oh. absolutely loved it. I think it's like a great first timer's wine or whatever you want to call it, but it's, it's absolutely delicious. Oh, for sure. Um, this Moscato has more flavor as well, um, especially fruity exotic flavors, a little bit of sage compared to other Moscatos you would find in the store. You know, everybody knows of the big wine brands that you're just going to run in and pick up quickly. But this Moscato has, like Kat mentioned earlier, a lot of personality. Yeah. So if you do like, see, I already used your, your line there. Thanks, Kat. Um, so it's a very great sharing wine with friends. No matter if you like dry or sweet wines, the Line and Dove Moscato is absolutely it. I am a person that loves dry wines, but I could definitely put some of this down even by accident at, at a party or <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Lisa Hall is asking, is it like a Prosecco? I know the answer to this, but you can... Um, it is a little bit bubbly, but it's not like a Prosecco. A Prosecco is more so like a champagne and it's going to be a lot, the Prosecco grapes and um, champagnes are a lot drier than this. This is just a light, sweet 
kind of bubbly wine. Isn't it a dangerous wine? Is big. Yeah, Leah Bolton wants to know what does it smell like. Okay, so for this, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of sweet wines they don't smell um, as fruity and exotic like this. But this smells a lot. Um, if you ever get even kind of like some kiwi or um, like the star fruit kind of aroma, it's just like that really fresh, um, very tropical flavors to this. This is so nice. This it's is like something where I could drink a few glasses without really realizing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It yeah. could also be that silent but deadly. You know when you like, so you have like <laughs> a drink, yeah. you're like, oh, I don't even taste the alcohol. And then all like, you're like, whoa. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the best part is it's not overly sweet. So you can still enjoy it and you're not going to, I mean, at least for me, if I drink a lot of sweet wines, they tend to be very syrupy and heavy. So they're just kind of thick and settle in your stomach. And this wine is, it's very high quality. It actually comes from uh, Italy, the Peculia um, region of it. So it's very high quality Moscato grapes that, that make it. And of course the bottle is very nice. And these are pretty even crafting with it afterwards. I'm surprised by the effervescence, effervescence, as you say. I, I wasn't, um, yeah, you don't tried expect this one yet and it's, it's, it's lovely. I didn't realize that it had that mm -hmm. sort of carbonated quality to it. Exactly. And a lot of people don't. And you wouldn't necessarily, even if you see it in a store, unless it says it. Uh -huh. And when you get home, you're going to be really happy and surprised by that. And like yeah. I said, I mean, it's fantastic. I sell it all the time to people that love those dry wines. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, what you I'm laughing at these comments. It's Somebody's making fun of me. They said Ebony tried to decipher what it smells like. It's so what? <laughs> they were so somebody is laughing at how I was trying to smell it because they were right. I was so into it. I was like, what are you like <laughs> we lost Ebony for just a second. Corinne, thank you, Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally into the wine, Corinne, and smelling it. That's so hilarious. Mm -hmm. I love y'all. Y'all are hilarious. Go. Now, this is one of my coworkers, Austin, actually, um, and he posted a, a thing here about the fact that Moscato is sweeter than Prosecco, but not overwhelmingly sweet. Yeah. A lot of your Moscato that you are going to pick up in stores sometimes are very, very heavy and super sweet. Like I said, this one, super refreshing. Chill it. Drink it all day long with your friends and you're going to lovely, absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. I'm also wondering what I'm going to do with all these open bottles of wine now. Um, um, I feel like I need to invite people over. Or I know. I feel like that. I need to be like, hey, <laughs> come over, but just don't come close. Just <laughs> I'm going to be like, hi there. Here's all these open yeah. bottles of wine. Come have a drink. I've made a lot of friends um, doing my virtual wine tastings during quarantine, especially neighbors, because... Yeah, I want to. I want to share the open bottles with them. I can't handle them all by myself. <laughs> so yeah, definitely just kind of just throw it, cork it really nice and throw it over the fence towards them and see what happens. Or g give it to the guy that's singing in your. Uh, singing. He's still going. Yeah. It's really incredible. Like what? A, I don't know. I can a glass. I will. I should bring For him. Sure. Like I was just oh, doing. Yeah. It. He, Here, he will I love it. this before your next song, sir, and then yeah, yeah. So, he's still going. He's been going this whole time. Wow! He's sit wow. six feet away and then run away. Yeah, okay. just put it down, and back away slowly. So uh, we what is he singing over there? Have raised thirty four hundred dollars. Yes, okay. um, and I have a feeling that when even at the end of this, I have a feeling I know a lot of you are going to get on. I've been looking at your messages and you're going to donate after this. So thank you. It seems like we actually might reach 5,000 uh, by the time I get up in the morning. So yes. that's, uh, that's absolutely, absolutely amazing. I wanted to get a, maybe one more question in um, and then we can say our, our goodbyes and all that. Absolutely. Um, I'm definitely a little tipsy, you guys. I'm not even yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I feel it too. Danielle wants to know how has Herpers changed your life? We know how you have changed ours all, but what is something they have given to you? Oh gosh, I love this question. I think the first thing that comes to my mind is I think when and I've I've said it before, but it it remains true. It, it's when you go into working in the media, I think sometimes there can be a lot of 
bullshit around it. I, you know, there's not always amazing things that are produced on TV. Um, there isn't, you know, sometimes you have to take jobs because you need to pay your bills. Um, not every job can be like, have your heart, you know? Um, but Winona definitely has my heart. And um, I've never, I think the thing that Erpers have give to, given to me is a sense of purpose. Because I, I often have wondered if, acting is the best use of my life if 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 what i'm doing with my life or my profession is bringing goodness into the world and helping to change things and it wasn't until winona earp that i really felt like maybe that might be true mm. um and that has been so massive for me um just to to feel like there's uh, maybe some good being brought into the world. I, I mean, I know that there is not maybe, I know that there is incredible good through the show and through the characters. And that's not just me, that's the, the whole entire team, the writers, um, the whole cast, the, all the crew, like everyone cares so much about the show and works so hard. But on a personal level, level it, the Erpers have given me a sense of purpose. And I think that there's, there's no greater gift than that. So, oh, I yeah. love that. Oh, that's a beautiful way to, I guess, yeah. end. Yeah, I, I love that. That was a great question, Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, well, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. And obviously, Kat and Devin, you guys have been super supportive of TAG and our scholarship. Um, Devin, I'm going to make sure people know, let them know how they can find out more about Lion and Dove before we go. Absolutely. Thanks once again for having me. I absolutely love to be able to support Tag Magazine as well, all of us here at Lion and Dove Wines. Um, right down below here, you can see our tag um, at Lion and Dove Wines. Go to our Facebook page right after this. Also our Instagram. Give a like. We're going to donate $1 towards the Tag um, Scholarship Fund. Uh, a super great cause. Ebony, you absolutely know. I love you. Kat, thanks Aww. so much for joining. My favorite. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. Cheers to that. Um, <laughs> definitely go to our website, um, www.lineandovewines.com. Uh, you can see a store locator on there. We are growing this fantastic brand that's locally owned here in Maryland in the United States. Um, so eventually when we want to be able to get it to all of you. So in the meantime, visit our website. You can also order it by calling or ordering online at Paul's Wine and Spirits in Washington, D.C. Um, and then message us anytime. You can follow me. Um, I'll put up one of my taglines as well. And if you ever have questions about wine or food pairing suggestions or anything, just reach out to me. I can help with all your wine needs. And if I don't know the answer, I will drink some wine and make up one. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. That's fair enough. We'll take it. We'll definitely take it. Devin, thank you. Thank you so much um, for, for everything of you do um, for us. We really appreciate you. And, and we're going to be back yeah. again. We're going to keep doing these with Lion oh, and yeah. Dove. They're just absolutely amazing. And Kat, um, any new projects, shows, anything going on that you want people oh, to know well, about? I mean, I, I mean, there's the obvious, of course. I might have there might have been a plane ticket booked today for me to go to the other side of the country to keep working on a project. Yay! So, um, keeping our fingers crossed for a safe uh, return to Winona Earp. Uh, everyone is working really, really hard to get this show back up and running. Uh, so obviously, I mean, Winona Earp's the big one. Uh, I know you guys are all really excited and uh, I'm so happy that we finally have an air date. And yes. we have a trailer out, and somebody sent me photos, pictures, pictures uh, released today that I haven't seen yet. So I'm gonna go online and, and see them. Um, <laughs> but I just, um, I just, uh, guys, I'm so grateful. I, you guys always show up. You always show up, and I knew you would for this. I'm so grateful. Tag Magazine and Ebony, what they're doing is incredible. Um, please support 
small businesses. Please support black owned businesses. Do your research to go and find those businesses and like them and share them with your family and friends. Um, like Ebony said earlier, you don't have to spend money to help. There are so many other ways that you can. And um, just a massive support for queer media, of course, like we need to keep making sure that queer voices are heard and celebrated. So just, I'm so happy to be here and thank you guys for showing up. I knew I knew that you would, but um, you know, I'm always just, it just makes my heart burst to see you guys there. And um, so just thank you. And thank you guys for having me. This has been such a great time. Oh, had such a fun time. And yeah, thank you again, everyone for watching and all the money we've raised. And I know we're gonna raise even more, like I said, by tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that we put up the goal um, or I'm sorry, the amount that was raised, which I'm sure will be our goal. That's why I see Fortian. It's not even the alcohol, it's the Fortian slip because I know we're going to reach that $5,000. So thank you, Kat. Thank you, everybody watching. Thank you, Devin and Lion and Dove. You guys have just been absolutely amazing. And Kat, hopefully sometime in the future we can do this again. No, oh, this would be awesome. I would love that. Let's totally do it again. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, happy Pride, everybody. Happy and remember, Pride. all Black Lives Matter. Happy Pride, guys. Thank you guys for Cheers showing up. Everyone. Cheers to everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye, guys.